How is it going everyone? Welcome to the channel and welcome to another LEGO Star Wars video. Now for today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks that are going to help you along your Skywalker Saga journey. Now these are all tips that I wish I knew when I first started. I learned a lot of these things out the hard way, so I'm making this video to help you guys out and to make sure that you guys don't make the same mistakes that I did. So jumping right into it, the first tip that I have for everyone is the fall recovery setting. Now everyone that plays LEGO Star Wars wants to make a lot of studs. They want to be rich. And one of the points of this game is to save up as much currency as possible so that you can purchase all the different characters and different spaceships and outfits. And you basically need as much currency as possible. So one thing that can help you on saving currency is that if you go to the settings and you can toggle on the fall recovery setting. Now, normally if you fell off a cliff, you would die and you will lose all of those studs. But with this turned on, you will no longer die from fall damage. If you fall off a cliff or something it will just teleport you back to safety and it will keep all of your studs intact but if you want a little bit more of a challenge in this game you can always just leave it off because this game is pretty easy and one of the ways that you can manipulate the difficulty is by leaving this off but if you want to save a lot of money then turn it on now next up is a very basic tip for those of you that have played LEGO games before, but I know a lot of people are checking out LEGO for the first time because of this game. A lot of people want to pick this up because of how hyped it is. So for those of you that are new to LEGO games, you want to destroy literally everything. If you see something made out of LEGO blocks, there's like a 99% chance that you can break it, and if you can break it, that is how you get currency. That is how you're going to be able to upgrade your stuff. So just destroy literally everything. You don't have to worry about breaking something important because the important blocks are normally indestructible and everything that you do break will just respawn the next time you play that area so just go ahead and break everything so the next tip i have for everyone is to play through the stories just start to finish that is the best way that you can unlock characters for free and this game allows you to do free play whenever you like so as soon as you load up the game if you wanted to, you would have the option to just do free roam. But trust me, you do not want to do that. You want to play through the game and you want to unlock as many characters as possible. Because a lot of the stuff in free roam, you're not going to be able to do until you have a certain character type or a certain ability. When I first started playing, I tried to go to free play and get some of the mini kits because I wanted to collect all the different mini kits. But I found out the hard way that I needed Jedi and I needed some scavengers and I needed different abilities in free roam and replay mode that I wasn't going to get for another like five or six missions down the line. So definitely beat all of the story missions before you attempt to do free play. So the next tip I have for everyone is to talk to literally every NPC possible. Any NPC that has a question mark or an explanation point above their head make sure you talk to them because they're going to either give you side quests that can unlock different characters or ships or they're going to give you a hint for your current objective or they might point you in the right direction for a kyber brick you never know what they're going to say sometimes when you talk to them they reveal rumors and these rumors are used to find different character locations and stuff for unlockables so just make sure that you talk to everybody so the next tip is a pretty quick one but this has to do with cutting holes in doors as jedi there's multiple places throughout the game where you have to cut a hole in the door but what I originally thought was that you had to make a really big space big enough for you to fit through but that's not the case you can literally just cut the smallest hole as possible and it will break the door for you so the next tip I have isn't really explained too well in the game but when it comes to certain characters you have to hold in certain buttons to activate their abilities now this is something that took me quite a few hours to figure out but if you're playing as a Jedi or a Sith if you hold in the Y button on the Xbox or the triangle button on PlayStation it will bring up your force power menu where you can then choose between different things like a distraction or a Jedi mind trick and for other classes like the heroes or the scavengers and the bounty hunters if you hold in the B button or the circle button this will allow you to activate things like a grenade or if you're playing as a scavenger then this will bring up the menu where you can then select between the three options of the glider the breaker blaster or the net gun these are all different things that you're going to need throughout your playthrough so just know that holding in some of the action buttons does bring up different menus for you to activate your abilities. Now the next tip has to do with disguises. Now through your playthroughs you guys are going to find a lot of disguises. When you put on a disguise it'll make it so the enemy will not attack
attack you. Uh, same goes if you're in free play mode. If you pick someone that's on the same team, they're not going to attack you. So for example, I picked Darth Vader. He's technically on the same faction as the battle droids. So if I wanted to, I could play through the entire mission without attacking anything and essentially speed run it if I wanted to. Same thing works in the opposite way. If you dress up as an enemy, then even your own teammates will start to attack you. So keep that in mind. So the next tip I have has to do with playing through the story. One of the upgrades that you can get for the heroes and the villains is the hero terminal expert perk and the villain terminal expert perk. Now these perks make it so you can either A, skip through the terminal or B, get paid to complete the terminal. Now, when you're playing through episodes one through nine, you're going to find at least one or two terminals in almost every single mission. So you might as well get paid to do it. Or if you just wanna skip them because they can get a little bit tedious and repetitive, it gives you the option to do that as well. So I highly recommend getting both of these upgrades. Another good upgrade to get that I recommend is the Business Opportunist perk. Now what this does is you receive a stud discount when you're purchasing rumors and hints. So anytime you're stuck and you can't quite figure out how to beat a certain spot or you can't find a Kyber brick or you can't find one of the mini kits, you can buy rumors and hints for about 30,000 studs and getting this upgrade will reduce the price of those. Uh, and then another good perk that I highly recommend everyone gets as soon as possible is the collectible detector perk. This is going to make it so all the collectibles in the environment are going to show up. That way when you're going through on your first playthrough, you can go ahead and get as many of these as possible. And then when you go back and do replay mode, they're going to be a lot easier because you already got most of them. So next up, I have a tip for the saber heroes and villains. Now I didn't know this for the longest time, but when you hold in left trigger, it aims your lightsaber and obviously right trigger will throw the lightsaber but instead of just tapping right trigger if you hold in the right trigger to throw you can then lock on to multiple targets at the same time and then when you finally let go you will hit all of those targets with your lightsaber throw. So instead of just hitting one target at a time, you can hit multiple and it looks really, really cool and it does a lot of damage. So the next tip that I have is for those of you that have a second controller. This game unfortunately doesn't have online multiplayer, but it does have couch co-op. So if you have a second controller and you're stuck at a puzzle or something, the addition of a second player will unlock tons of different opportunities that you couldn't do by yourself. For example, there's a lot of puzzles that are a lot easier if you have two people people playing versus just playing solo. I know for some puzzles I couldn't figure out how to do it so I just plugged in a second controller and I was able to get myself up on a block and just raise the block up in the air and then double jump to get to different locations and stuff and it's just really handy to sometimes have a second controller if you're having trouble with some of the puzzles. So next up let's talk about some of the upgrades that I feel like is a pretty good idea to just skip completely at least towards the beginning of your playthrough they might be worth getting later on but under the core upgrades tab at the very top you're going to see three different ones that you have to get in order to unlock the next level you have speedy sprint fast build and counter cash personally in my playthrough i didn't have very many opportunities to counter and let's be honest when you do counter it's only going to give you a couple hundred studs so honestly i would avoid counter cash completely because it's just not worth the investment but i do think that speedy sprint is pretty handy and i recommend getting that one and then up next is extra health. This is the only extra health that I recommend getting because honestly the combat is so easy that you don't really need additional health. Very rarely did I ever die and when I did die it didn't matter because of this next perk. So this perk is called Attract Studs and it is very very good. I recommend everyone get this as soon as possible. This is one of the perks that you want to get as early in your playthrough as possible because it is going to make you a lot of money. So Attract Studs, when you upgrade it to level 3, Attract Studs from a large distance away and it will just siphon all the studs within a big radius straight to you. You don't have to worry about running to go get some and it just makes life way easier. And having this perk fully upgraded completely counteracts having the health upgrades because if you ever do die when you respawn you don't have to worry about running around and collecting your studs this attract studs perk will just siphon back all of the studs that you lost when you died so in my playthrough i just completely avoided the extra health because honestly i didn't really need the extra health and i was much better off spending the kyber bricks on a different perk for something better 
And then the final tip I have for you guys is to save as much money as possible. I know everybody wants to go out and unlock all the different characters and unlock all the ships and you want to buy all the coolest outfits as soon as possible, but trust me, you don't want to do that. Through almost your entire playthrough, you're just going to want to just save up your studs. And what you're going to want to do is go to the extras tab and buy the stud multipliers. Trust me, it's an investment that's well worth it. Once you hit times two and times four, you really start racking in the money and then you're able to buy the characters much faster than if you bought them as you progressed. I made the mistake early on of buying a couple cool characters and then I couldn't afford more things that I wanted because I just wasn't making enough money. If you don't buy the stud multiplier, it's going to make the grind just way, way slower. So I highly recommend that you save off buying the characters till last. But that is going to do it for all the tips and tricks that I have for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up. It helps me out in the algorithm. And that is going to do it for me, everyone. And I will talk to you all in the next video.